Hello friends, I am Dr. Parag Bhatt. I am pediatric cardiologist working in Mumbai at Sujo Heart Clinic. These are some videos I wish to share with you. These are mainly for patient information and help patient understand what are the common congenital heart defects and how various surgical and transcatheter intervention can help them and how they can improve their quality of life. This will also help alleviate their anxiety and try to make them accept, accessible for patient care. So today we are going to discuss atrial septal defect. These are quite common heart diseases. Let's see what we are going to discuss today. So we are just going to discuss what is atrial septal defect, what are common signs and symptoms, who all are affected, how to diagnose it, what are the different treatment options and of the surgical modalities versus device closure, what is better and what you should choose. Your doctor will definitely advise you in every of this step. So first coming to what is the atrial septal defect. Our heart is four chambered organ, upper to our atria, low to our ventricle. This is right side which receives deoxygenated blood and left side which receives oxygenated or pure blood. There is a partition between right and left side. So in atrial septal defect, there is a hole in upper chamber of heart as you can see here with the arrow. So the blood from left side goes to right side and right side increases in size. So and it leads to increased blood flow to the lungs. So what is the incidence or how common is it? It's a very common congenital uh, asynotic heart disease. Asynotic means there is no blueness of baby to begin with. So it is seen around 1 in 500 births. It accounts for 10% of heart defe defects. And almost two-thirds of patients are females, uh, the girls or women. So for a so again showing a atrial septal defect, left side that is decreased and right side that is increase in size. There are four common type of atrial septal defect. Commonest is ostium secundum ASD, then sinus venosus ASD, that is SVC type, IVC type, coronary sinus and ostium primer. Ostium secundum ASD is the commonest and we are going to discuss mainly ostium secundum ASD, the one which is central. So what are the effects of ASD? How does it affect any individual? As we can see this echo already depicted in the pictures, the blood goes from left side to right side, right side increases in size and increased blood goes to the lungs and right heart becomes big dilated and over years, I am not saying months over years maybe 20 years 30 years as increased blood flow to the lung it is a bad effect on lung and lung pressure goes on increasing and patient develops pulmonary hypertension and as right side becomes big they develops atrial arrhythmias so what are the symptoms of asd the symptoms of asd begins quite early in infancy baby who have large ASD generally have weight which is less than they should have. So they are little thin built. The weight gain is less than expected. So generally baby grows around 600 gram to 1 kilogram per month. This baby grows little slower than that their anticipation. They are not very symptomatic. Very occasionally we get a respiratory tract infection or feeding difficulty. As baby grows become 3-4 years, 5-6 years old, their weight is generally less than the kids. They are thin built, fragile. I got easy fatigability and as one grows in adulthood and later maybe 25 30 years of age when there is significant dilatation of right side pulmonary pressure goes up then there is significant breathlessness palpitation then as heart fails in then leg swelling chest pain all these symptoms begins to set in so how to diagnose ASD? Generally, ASD is diagnosed when doctor says there is a murmur in your heart. And so, baby may go for vaccination to a pediatrician or you have gone to your physician for routine evaluation. You say there is a murmur in your heart. That is the most important thing. Then you consult a cardiologist or pediatric cardiologist. There is some tests like cardiography, ECG, X-ray are done. Transesophageal echo is mainly indicated in adult patient where reams of ASD are not well seen. So, this 
echo shows an ASD flow from left to right and this is the ASD. Next important thing that we should understand what happens if ASD is not treated in time or ASD is left open to its natural state. Somebody, even doctor advised, okay, you go ahead and we have to close the ASD. It is not done. So in a kid, if baby is having a recurrent respiratory tract infection or his weight gain is less, then he will continue to suffer. Or in case of a top young adult, 5 year old kid, he will remain to be a low weight person. He will always be a thin person. He will not put on a weight. These are the main symptoms that are seen in young kids. The major symptom develops or worrisome symptom develops in later age around 20-25 years of age when severe pulmonary arterial hypertension sets in and heart failure sets in. Once these things are set in, then patient find it very difficult to walk. Then there are atrial arrhythmias, there is edema of feet, right ventricular failure. All these worrisome symptoms sets in. So in untreated cases, the life expectancy is decreased by 10 to 15 years. That means that if somebody is going to live 75 years, he is not going to live for 75 years. His 10, 15 years are constant. He is going to live for 60 years. And last 20 to 30 years, he will be quite symptomatic with the disease. So if somebody not choose to close the ASD, his next life will be quite symptomatic and his life expectancy is going to decrease. A premature death is observed. So another thing is what happens once ASD is closed. So in kids, there is important thing that there is a spurt in growth. Baby put on weight rapidly. Baby who was not putting on weight for months together will put on a couple of kgs in the next two to three months after ASD closure. Cuff cold goes down drastically. Your doctor just goes down. And after that, once ASD is closed, life expectancy is like any other normal individual. There is he will do 65, 70, 80, whatever he is supposed to do. In adults, there is improvement in symptoms, there is increase in vigor in life. Okay, and the chances of pulmonary hypertension decreases. So earlier you close the VSD, higher chances that you will live a normal life. You won't have any long-term complications. Even in elderly, even if somebody is diagnosed with ASD at 45, 50, 60 years of age, after ASD closure in suitable patient, this subset we have to see whether they, they can really tolerate ASD closure or not. If it is closed, there is improvement in symptoms. They find that they are less symptomatic, their breathlessness, everything goes down drastically. So there are two ways of closing ASD. One is surgical way, one is device closure. Surgical is a conventional way, one has to get admitted in hospital five to seven days is open heart surgery. A device closure is generally one, one and a half days of hospitalization. Next day of surgery or sometimes in the day evening you can be discharged. Open heart surgery one has uh, comes with pain of sternotomy, the chest is open, the three to six weeks recovery generally anticipated. Then intervention is done in cath lab, a device closure is done in cath lab and there is very little pain and normal activity can be done with that day three, day four of life. So a child who has gone ASD closure within two, three days can start playing and doing everything. No need to restrict activity of a child. So the success rate is very good in experts and mortality is almost unheard of in good hands whether it is surgical closure or device closure. And complication risk is also very small with surgical closure or device closure. The main problem with device closure is device embolization or sometimes of AV blocks or atrial arrhythmias. But in good hands with due diligence, the risk is very small. So surgical closure is mainly indicated when device is not possible, when rims are absent or in primum ASD or in sinus venous ASD. In cases of device closure, the ostium secundum ASD, 85% cases are suitable for device. Primum ASDs or all these are not suitable for device closure. So there are no new reports of closing sinus venous ASD with a stent. Then we will discuss about it at some other point in time. So this is a picture in presentation. After surgical closure, there is a midline scar midline sternotomy scar while with transcatheter closure with chest is there is no scar on the chest everything is normal it is procedure is done through groin with a with a catheter which is around three to four millimeter thick so the small 
it's very tiny scar of a, if you put a mark with a pen ball pen that scar that that is the size of the scar so this is an animatic animation of asd closure the catheter is there you open the device this is the la la disc is open and after la disc is open you open the ra disc or right atrial disc so this is the de defect or asd or hole that is closed with a umbrella shape device after device is in position the screw is released this is the screw that is released and the device stays there these are the different varieties of ASDs that we generally use different companies make their own way of doing just repeating the animation for one more time for you that you see how it is done actually and understand so after device is released confirm everything everything is in position release the screw and the procedure is okay so this is actual cath lab demonstration okay wire is put this is the sheath delivery sheath on the delivery sheath then we going to load the device so device will come so the device though device is very big it goes through this sheath so this is the device we confirm the position of the device position the device at the position and then we release the device this is the device being released this is the la disc that is being released then the ra disc that is being released yeah this is the la disc ra disc both these are released this is a t probe to confirm the position of device intraoperatively this is a mandatory where we when i do the procedure t is using almost all the patients device is released once device is released we can check in different position just showing the loop again that you understand this is a ta guided asd closure t is a transesophageal echo which we use <coughs> to see the device position intra heart anatomy through the esophagus behind the heart just playing the video once again that we understand how the device is done in cath lab it's for it's for the everybody to see once procedure is done we generally show this video to the parents and explain them how the procedure is done okay after device release and now device is in position okay now this is how device looks in initial video we have seen the defect now this is how the device looks on echocardiography this echo is done after the device is released so again so this is the equation after 3 to 4 months of procedure the right heart is decrease in size device is in position there is no flow and the left heart is increase in size so there are some questions people ask what happens after device closure see there are procedural risk which are less than 1% if device sits in position and it is not embolized and it is going to stay there for rest of life once it stays there it is not going to move so hole or asd once closed is not going to open again and over 3 to 4 months time the right side which was big in size decreases in size the pulmonary hypertension regresses and normal heart tissue the endothelium grows over the device and it becomes a, like an internal structure we generally avoid cardiac mri for initial 6 months after 6 months anything can all cardiac mri or mri can be done so the requirement of mri is otherwise very rare but just a precautionary measure so after asd is done within 3 to 6 weeks or within 2 days or 3 days we do all walking and other activity even heavy activity are generally allowed after 3 months there is no pain that is the main advantage of doing asd device thank you hope you have liked uh, the presentation